Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Total Quilter Monthly for March 2018. My name is Mark Garretts and I'm a National Floriani Educator. In this month's edition, we're going to continue building on what we did in the past two months, except this time instead of putting our block together in the hoop, we are going to put it together traditionally in a normal sewing machine. Now in the past two months lessons, we took the diagram that you see on the left, which was a traditional paper piecing or foundation piecing design, and showed you first in January how you could take this and put it into my decorative quilter or total quilter and turn it into a piece in the hoop design instead of doing it in the sewing machine like you normally would. In February, we took this same diagram and showed you how instead of doing a stitch and flip or piece in the hoop design, you could make an apple quilt design out of it, which is a much more efficient, fast, and fun way to make that block. But what if you wanted to make this block totally traditionally in the sewing machine? Could you do that with Total Quilter? And the answer is yes, you can with a new feature that we added, the seam allowance tool. And that's kind of what we're going to feature in this month's webinar, but we're going to go over some other topics as well. So if you haven't done it already, you want to go ahead and open Total Quilter, and you will definitely need Total Quilter for this month's lesson. And if you also haven't done it already, I uh, would invite you to go back and view January's lesson and February's lesson because it will be the lead on to what we're going to learn today. And before we get started, what you'll want to do is come up here and click this icon right here, the new icon, to get a new page. And let's get our pages all set up to look about the same. So let's talk about mouse clicks before we do that. If I want you to just regularly click with the mouse, I will just say click. If I want you to right click with the mouse, I will say right click. And if I want you to do something like hold down control and click, I will say control click or hold down control and click. I'll give you those special instructions. But if I just say click, that means to do a normal left click of the mouse. So what I want you to do first is come up to the top ruler bar and put your cursor so it's over the ruler bar somewhere and then right click on it to bring up this little menu. Now you should be in inches mode. If you're not, go ahead and click inches. We want show grid checked and we also want snap to grid checked. And If those are unchecked when you check them, this little window is going to go away. So go back and right click on the ruler bar to bring it back. And then lastly, come down here to Grid Settings and click that. And you want your grid spacing horizontally to be a quarter of an inch or 0.25. Vertical also 0.25. Your grid major is not real important, but I like to set it to 1 inch, so I have it at 4 and 4. So that means for every 4 quarters of an inch or 1 inch, I'm going to get a darker purple line. That's our grid major lines. Everything else should be OK, and go ahead and click OK to lock those things in. The next thing we're going to do is set up our thread palette. We're not actually going to stitch anything or use any thread in this lesson, but we're going to apply some colors, and the way we do that is with our thread colors. And so the thread palette I want you to use is the Floriani Cotton Palette. You see when I hover over it, I get it to say Floriani Cotton. and uh, I am going to pick my thread palette by clicking this select thread chart icon right here and then check Floriani Cotton. So if you're not with Floriani Cotton, go ahead and do that. And the reason we're doing that is because it's a very small thread palette. It's only got 15 colors. We're actually all, we're only going to use a few of them. So uh, this makes it easy to choose colors. We don't have to scroll through a whole long thread palette. So once we've done all of those things to get set up, your screen should look something like this. The next thing we want to do is we're going to load in a backdrop. Now a backdrop is an image uh, that we're going to put on the screen that we're going to trace over the top of. And we're going to continue to use that same foundation piece image that we've used for the last two lessons. And wherever you put that on your machine, 
and if you don't have it you can download it from the uh, webinar section of the website for this month's lesson or you can grab it from the last two months lessons because it's going to be exactly the same we're going to come right here to our backdrop icon our backdrop tool and click that we're going to choose backdrop and then it's going to come up by default into our images directory that uh, comes with the software and I've put this particular image that I want to use as a backdrop on my desktop. So I'm going to click desktop and then I'm going to scroll down till I find it and it's called square and a square dot jpeg and I'm going to go ahead and open that up and that's going to bring it in. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lighten this backdrop up so you can see it a little bit better as I start to trace some lines over the top of it and if your backdrop is selected then you should see over here on the far right your backdrop properties in the properties box but if your backdrop is not selected for some reason and you don't see anything over here and that will happen if you had once you brought it in you came back and clicked select you'll see just the design notes over here the way to get this back selected is to come back and click the backdrop tool again it knows since you've got a backdrop loaded not to load another one or ask you if you want to load a backdrop or a magic block. So now over here in the properties I've got this slider that allows me to lighten and darken it. So I'm going to move this over here a little bit about three quarters of the way over to the right and I'm going to click apply and that's going to ghost this out a little bit so you can see when I start to draw lines where they're going to be drawn and I think I'm actually going to turn off my grid and the reason I'm going to do that is again when I start to draw lines they're going to be right on top of the grid lines so again they'll be a little bit harder to see but even though I've turned the grid off remember that the grid is still there and remember we have snap to grid turned on now what snap to grid is all about so when I start clicking points as I click them they're going to snap to the intersection of two grid lines so if I were to click for example right here it would snap to that point where these two grid lines intersect and that's going to stay active even though I have my grid turned off now the way I turn off my grid is to click this grid button right here which is going to hide the grid so now again my grid is still there but it is hidden so what I'm going to do now is come up and select my artwork tool here, my line tool. And that's going to allow me to start putting in lines. And let me just kind of explain what we're going to be up to here. We're going to create this block. In order to do that in normal fabric, we have to create outlines that trace the shape of each one of these uh, shapes that are in the quilt block. So I've got two different triangles and that center square. So those are my basic shapes. Now normally if I was going to use all the parts of this I would want to trace each one of these shapes independently and uh, then I could have a complete quilt block to work with. But what we're going to do is once we create these shapes we're actually going to either print them out on paper as a template or cut them with a digital cutter and then uh, I will be able to take those over to my sewing machine and I will be able to piece them together. So I'm not really that concerned with having all the pieces of the block. All I really need is one of each different type of piece. And so since this triangle is the same as this triangle, it's the same as this triangle, it's the same as this triangle, and all these triangles are the same and I've only got this one square, I only really have three unique pieces here. So rather than having to try and trace each piece independently, all I've got to do is trace one of these triangles, one of these triangles, and this square. And you'll see how easy this is to do because I have Snap to Grid turned on. So we're going to start with this triangle up here in the corner. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to come down here and click, come back up to where I started and clicked. Then I'm going to come over here to this tool, which is my Close shape tool and click that and that's automatically going to close that shape for me. Now I'm going to do the same thing 
with this one over here. So I'm going to come and select my line tool one more time. And I'm going to start down here and click, come up here and click, come over here and click, come back to the beginning and click again, close that shape. I've got one more to do. That's my center square. So I'm going to get my line tool one more time. Click here, 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 just going around that square. And then one more time, click my close shape icon. And now I've created the three shapes. Now, because they're on top of the uh, diagram, it's a little bit hard to see them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn my backdrop off by clicking this show or hide the backdrop tool here with a little eyeball. So if I click that, now you can see I've got the three shapes. Now they're snugged up together, so it's a little hard to see that they're three separate shapes, but they are. But let's go ahead and color them in like they would be in a quilt block. So I'm going to use the same color for all my outside triangles. So let's go ahead and leave that in that slate blue, which is the default. But let's go ahead and fill it in. So I'm going to click the fill button here and click apply. And then I'm going to select my next one here. And let's use green for that one. So I'm going to pick the green. And I'm going to fill that in and click apply. And I'm going to use a beige for this one here. So I'm going to use this light brown color here. And again, I'm going to fill that in and click apply. So now I've got my three basic pieces and I can turn my backdrop back on. And at this point, I can actually turn my grid on again if I want to. Really doesn't matter. But now I've got the three basic pieces that I need. But how do I get these cuttable? Because I have just created them in the exact finished size, I have not put a seam allowance on any of these pieces. So in order to do that, what we're going to use is this new tool right here, our new seam allowance tool that just came out in the latest update. And we're going to start with this piece here. So I'm going to select it. Now I could do a copy and then I could create a new design window and paste it. I could simply move it off to the side and work with it. Or I can use the built-in function that would be my cut preview, which is this icon right here. So let's go ahead and use that. So I've got this piece selected. So if I click cut preview, it's going to automatically copy and paste it into a new window. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I want you to be able to see the uh, seam allowance that gets added to it. So I'm going to click the drop down and click zoom out. And that zoomed out a lot. So uh, that's okay. You'll still be able to see what's going on. So here's my basic piece. If I select it and then I click this seam allowance tool, it gives me some options. First of all, I can set the amount of my seam allowance. It defaults at a quarter of inch, an inch, which is what we want for normal quilting. And I can choose my corner types. I can choose mitered corners, which is basically going to be a square corner. I can have a beveled corner, which is going to be a cutoff corner. And I can have a rounded corner. Now, why would I choose one versus the other? Well, a mitered corner is pretty traditional. It makes it fairly easy to line the pieces up when you're going to seam them together. A beveled corner is also easy to line up, uh, but it cuts the corner off for us kind of automatically, which is going to reduce some bulk in the seam in the corner. So I'm probably going to go ahead and use that one. And round does the same kind of thing as bevel, uh, but just makes a rounded corner if you prefer that. Now the last thing I've got here is remove selection. Now normally I'm going to use remove selection, but I'm going to do it with a beveled corner. In fact, let me choose miter first so you can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to leave the selection in. So the selection is this out here and I'm going to click OK. And what you can see out here now is uh, let me actually change the width of that line. I'm going to make it one millimeter wide so you can see it. Click apply and I'm going to click off it. So now you can see I've got this thick line out here. Now the thickness of that line, what I just did, really doesn't affect anything. It only makes it easier to see. 
So if you want to make your lines thicker to make them easier to see, that's okay. And that might help when you print out a template, but when we cut it, it really doesn't matter. But I wanted you to see how it adds that line around the edge here. Now, if we're going to print this or we're going to cut it, we probably don't want this big filled area in here. First of all, if we're going to print it, it uses up a lot of ink that we really don't need. And secondly, if we're going to cut it, it will actually see this inner shape as something to cut as well. And that will actually mess our cutting. But we don't want that either. So what I'm going to do is do an undo actually twice to get rid of my uh, seam allowance there. I'm going to reselect it. I'm going to redo it for real this time. And I'm going to click my seam allowance tool again. This time I'm going to tell it to remove the selection. So it's going to remove this inner piece. And I'm going to go to bevel, which is the default, and click OK. And now what I've got is this nice uh, outline here. And again, I can go ahead and make that a little bit thicker so it's easier for you to see on the screen at home. There we go. Click apply. Didn't quite click it right the first time. I'll click off of it so you can see my piece there. Now this gives me just one piece, but you know that I actually need four of them. And so what I do next will kind of depend on how I'm going to cut this piece out. I would either cut it with a digital cutter, and we'll talk about that first, or I would print it and I would put it onto a piece of paper and then cut those template pieces out from my paper and then cut them on a cutting mat with a rotary cutter or scissors. So let's talk about cutting it with a digital cutter first because that's the cool way to do it and the fastest way to do it and actually the most accurate way to do it. So here I've got my cut piece, but like I say, I need four of them. So I can simply copy and paste this uh, three times to get four pieces. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, since I'm going to put it on a digital cutter, what I want to do is arrange those four pieces so they fit on my cutting mat. So I can put a piece of fabric down and make sure I can cut all four pieces on one piece of fabric. So the way I'm going to do that is come over here to my left icon bar and click cutting mat. And that's going to show me my cutting mat. Now, right now in the software over here in my choices for cutting mat, I basically got a custom cutting mat so I can make it any size I want or the Cameo 12 by 12 and 12 by 24 mats. It turns out that this setting Cameo 12 by 12 or 12 by 24 actually works for all of the various mats that are out there because pretty much all of them come in 12 by 12 or 12 by 24. And this is actually just a visual reference for us of what the cutting mat uh, boundaries are. The fact that it's a cameo mat doesn't matter because nothing's really going to happen with the mat if we were to say cut it on a Brother Scannon cut or an Artistic Edge or a different cutter like that. So this gives me a visual reference of my cutting area. And assuming I'm going to put a piece of fabric down that covers the whole mat, then uh, I can do my copy and paste and arrange these on the page so that they cut out using the least amount of fabric as possible. So what I'm going to do is select this piece and I'm going to make a copy of it by clicking my copy icon. And then what I'm going to do is do three pastes. So I'm going to do one, two, three. And you can see over here in my sequence view, now I've got three pieces of artwork and they are all copies. So my last one is automatically selected. So I'm going to move it out of the way just so you can see that I've really got four pieces here and I'll move the last one out of the way. Whoops, I didn't quite get it selected. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is arrange them for optimal cutting. And I'm just going to do that visually by moving them up to the corner there and I'll move this one here and actually to get the most uh, bang for my buck out of the fabric I'd actually want to rotate this and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around 180 degrees now be careful you don't actually flip it like I said these pieces happen to be perfectly symmetrical 
So if I did flip them, it would not be a big deal. But you just have to be careful if your quilt pieces are not actually symmetrical. Flipping them will make them be upside down, so that's not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees twice, and then this allows me to snug it up right in here like this and get the least amount of fabric out of it. In fact, since I've got this pattern here and I like that, what I'm going to do is actually reuse that. So I'm just actually going to drag a box around these two and delete them. So I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard to do that. Then I'm going to select all of these rather than dragging a box. I've clicked on this top level item here to select both of them and then I'll copy and paste that and then I'll just move this over and now I can just put a little piece of fabric down on my mat that doesn't have to cover the whole mat and I'll cut these pieces out. So the next step is to actually make a file that can go to a digital cutter. So the way I would do that is I would come over here to my file and I would come down to export artwork and click that and uh, it's going to ask me the type and where I want to save it. Now I'm actually not going to save this but uh, you would want to navigate to the directory where you'd want to save it like your desktop or some other folder and I'm going to click the down arrow to show you the options. So SVG is the basic option. SVG stands for uh, standard vector file or uh, standard vector graphic file and uh, that is a file type that pretty much every cutter out there can read. HPGL or PLT files, those are the original files that plotters or cutters used. Uh, AI files would be something for Adobe Illustrator and then last you have the option of saving it in the FCM format which is the format for the brother scan and cut but scan and cuts can also read SVGs so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it SVG and then I would give it a name and click Save and I would have this particular set of block pieces to cut now what I need to do is repeat that procedure for the other blocks and I would just do it the same way and I would click say that triangle and I would again do my cut preview which would bring up that uh, blank window. I would select it, do my seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. I'm gonna make sure I check remove selection and um, I'll double click out so you can see what I'm ending up with. I'll go ahead and change that pen width again. And again, changing this pen width is just something I'm doing so you can see it at home. You don't really need to do that. It's not gonna affect the cut lines. It's still gonna to cut to the exact dimensions and then I would do the same thing that I just did with showing my map etc to get my uh, cut file and then I would save that as a separate cut file for this color piece so you can see how that goes I would just repeat that for all the pieces and uh, then I would take them over to my digital cutter and cut them out now when I get to my digital cutter I need to set it up to cut fabric now normally when we cut fabric with our digital cutter, we are cutting it to cut applique pieces. And so we'll put a piece of applique wonder or quilter select apple stick material on the back, stick it down to our mat and cut it. And we'd be left with a sticky back applique piece, which is great for appliques, but does not work at all for quilt block pieces. So what you want to do instead depends on the cutter that you have. Some cutter these days have special rotary blades that can cut fabric directly without using any special mat or any special backing. But if you don't have one of those, you're either going to have to use what's called a high tack fabric mat that can hold the fabric down so a regular blade can cut it without prepping the fabric in any way, or you have to prep the fabric in some fashion. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. You can starch it. You can apply a product called Terial Magic to it, which is essentially a starch or stiffener that allows you to cut the fabric without it fraying or tearing or lifting off the mat. But the method that I prefer is I take something called Quilter Select Select Cutaway. 
That's a very, very, very light cutaway product that we sell. It's fusible. It's in the Quilter Select line from Alex Anderson. And if you fuse that to the back of your fabric before you stick it down on the mat, it stabilizes the fabric and holds it together so it can stay down on a normal tack mat and then you can cut it with a normal fabric blade in your digital cutter. And then you have the option of attempting to peel the piece of cutaway off the back of the piece when you're done cutting it. But personally, I just like to leave it there. It is so lightweight that you will not actually feel it when it's in the quilt. And it has the added advantage of adding a little bit better hand to the fabric, giving it a little bit more weight and it also keeps the fabric from fraying when you're working with it. So it keeps the edges of your fabric nice and neat. So I prefer that method, but you can use any method that's up to you. Now what if we would like to, instead of using a digital cutter to create this block, instead what we want to do is we want to cut it using a normal pair of scissors or a rotary cutter on a mat. In that case, we need to print out these pieces instead of actually cutting them. So let's go back to our design window that we have here with these four pieces on it. And instead of actually cutting it out, what we're going to do is print it on a piece of paper and then either trace that onto fabric or use it as a template to cut around. So the way I would do that is I would go ahead and do everything I did to get to this point, which is show my cutting mat and duplicate my pieces the way we did originally. But when I'm using a piece of paper, I need to make sure that it's going to print these pieces on it without going off the edge or being in the margin. And I want to get as many pieces on that piece of paper as I can. So what I can do is come over here to my cutting mat controls. And right here you'll see I have a page size. Now originally I left this alone because we wanted to see the whole mat. But if I wanted to print it instead of cut it, and I know this is a cutting mat, but we're going to ignore that. This is just going to be a shortcut way to see a piece of paper size. A normal piece of paper is 8.5 by 11 inches. So I'm going to come in here and change my page size to 8.5. And I'm going to change the other one to 11 and click Apply. All right. And so now what I've got is a boundary here showing me where a normal piece of paper is. And you can see that if I did this on a normal piece of paper, I'd be pretty close to the edge. And I'd be off the edge way over here. So I'm just going to select these two pieces. And whoops, I didn't do that right. Let me try again. Select these two pieces. You gotta Before you start to move, you got to make sure you got that hand. And I did not do that. So I'm just going to bring these down. And I'm going to bring these in a little bit and down. And then I'm going to select these pieces over here. And I'm going to bring them over and down a little bit because I want to make sure I'm not too close to the edge so my printer can print it. And so I could go ahead and print these. If I wanted to, I could try and also fit my triangles on. So let's see if I can do that. I'll come over here and grab my triangle. So I'm going to select it. It's already selected for me. I'll do a copy and then I'll come back over here to this window and I'll do a paste. And looky there, I can probably fit these four triangles out. Now when I'm cutting on fabric, I don't want to do this because I want my fabric to be a different color. But since I'm putting these on paper and then I'm going to cut these paper templates out, I can get as many on a piece of paper as I can and I'll know that this one is going to be a different color because it's a different size triangle. So let me actually um, paste that a few more times. So I'm going to paste three more and I'm just going to come and bring this one down here. So there's another one and then this one in order to get it to fit what I'm going to do is rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to grab this one and also rotate it 90 degrees and bring it down in here. So you can see now I'm going to cut eight pieces on one piece of paper. Now to cut this out what I need to do 
is once I have it the way I want, laid out the way I want, I'm going to come up here to my print preview icon and click it and it's going to bring up a page showing me uh, how this is going to cut out and then I can just send it to my printer. Now if you don't see anything it's important to get your settings right because what we're seeing here is not stitches what we're seeing is artwork and the default for the print settings I believe is not to print artwork so we're going to come here and click our settings right here for our printer and we're going to make sure that artwork is checked and the other thing that's important is to make sure that print actual size is checked so if you don't do those two things then uh, you will have incorrect size templates and you won't see them at all unless you have artwork checked so once you do that go ahead and click OK and then you can click the print icon here to send them to the printer now I'm not going to do that but you would do that at home and then of course once you're done you'd click close and you would have to come back over to this design and do the same thing with this piece here to print out this final square so again send it to a different design window put your seam allowances on it and then uh, print it out on template or cut it so that is how we would do this particular block by tracing over the top and creating artwork pieces but there's yet another way to do that and if you don't want to trace the pieces like I did here if you would rather do it using the appliquilt method of creating the block pieces you can do that as well so let me show you how that would work so we're going to go ahead and work with this same screen and what I'm going to do is delete all the pieces that I made so I'm just going to come here and select all item I'm going to right click on this and just click delete so I'm showing you a bunch of different ways and you can still see my same backdrop is here so to review what we did in the previous section was we traced over the pieces that we needed so this piece this piece and this piece with our line tool drawing artwork but that's um, not that tedious because we only had to do those pieces but just to complete the puzzle here let's do it using appliquil and the way we do that is click this icon right here with this cool new way to create an appliquil block and if you'll remember from our previous lesson the first thing our appliquil creation tool wants us to do is draw the outline of the block so I'm gonna go ahead and click right here and drag down to the bottom and uh, since I have snap to grid turned on it's gonna create a nice precision block for me and the next thing it wants me to do is slice this block up now I could think about how I might want to slice it up just to get the pieces I need but that's too much mental effort actually so I'm just gonna go all the way around and slice it up as if I cared about getting all the pieces of the block so I'm gonna start here and here I'm just clicking all the way around and come back up to my start point and when I'm done with that I'm gonna press the enter key on my keyboard to tell it I'm done with that line I'm gonna do the inner square here so I'm gonna come all the way around and whoops I'm gonna uh, do a backspace to get rid of that point and I'm going to click right there you see how snap to grid kind of messed me up there because I wasn't paying attention so I'm gonna come back here and click come up here and click and by the way I just kind of breezed right through that but if you misclick a point backspace will undo that point and you can click again and then I'm gonna press enter again to lock that in and now all I have to do is a right click to create that block now I've created all the pieces and they're all gray and I want to see them in color so let's go ahead and color them in now I could just color in the three pieces that I want but it's not going to take that long to color them all in so I'm going to come here in order to do that and select my Appliquil object selection tool and I'm going to start with my outside pieces so I'm going to do that I'm going to hold down control and click on my second outside piece my third one and my fourth one and I'm going to go ahead and assign them to this slate blue color so I'm going to click on that slate blue it asks me if I want to assign it to a fabric color or add it to the design palette I want to do the fabric color so I'm going to click that I'm going to do these next inner ones just like we did before and I'm going to do my green 
to that one. Again, I'm going to select fabric color. And lastly, this one, which I did this light brown, and I'm going to click fabric color. So now I've got my block created, but I can't assign seam allowances to this because it's not a normal artwork block. In order to turn it into a normal artwork block, I'm going to use a special function inside Total Quilter, which allows me to get artwork lines or fills from this Appliquilt block. And so what I'm going to do to get that is select the block in normal select mode. So I've come over here and click select and that automatically selected my whole block for me. And what I'm going to do now is right click on it. And now I have two options, get fills as artwork or get lines as artwork. And what I want is the fills. So I care about the block pieces. So I'm going to click that. And now what I've got, actually, you can see down here what's been created is artwork pieces that are the same as my Appliquilt pieces, the same as the pieces I created in the first step. So what I would do now is I'm going to actually delete my Appliquilt block because I don't care about that anymore. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to actually I'll right click on it over here and select delete to delete that and now I can do the same thing as I did before but now since I've got all the pieces that I care about um, I really don't even have to uh, copy and paste them like I did before I can select uh, well it's all grouped so I better ungroup it so I'm gonna select my ungroup icon so I can just select all four of my slate blue pieces my big triangles on the outside. So I'm going to select that one, select this one, select this one, and select that one. And I could now go to my cut preview and I'd get all those pieces, but they won't have the seam allowances on them. So I'm not actually going to do that. What I would do is proceed the way I did previously, which is select that one piece, go to my cut preview, and uh, then apply my seam allowance to it just like I did before and then arrange them and either cut them with the digital cutter or print them out. And so either way you want to do it by creating this Appliquilt block which was back here now on our first page or you want to just trace the lines with the line tool. Either way you want to do it. It's a perfectly good way to create the artwork block pieces that you need to then create your seam allowances and either print them on paper and use them as a template or cut them with your digital cutter. So that completes this month's lesson from March 2018. I want to thank everybody for watching and invite you to come back next month for the next installment of Total Quilter Monthly.